Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to our uh, first outdoor service of the year. Um, normally we've had a couple by now, but it's uh, been so blistering hot that we've uh, um, retreated inside. But uh, what a great day. And uh, what a great day to bring uh, our friends along to uh, worship with us this morning. Which uh, reminds me of a story. There was a, there was a man and a dog walking along the road. And as they were walking, enjoying uh, the sun, it suddenly occurred to the man that he was dead. And he looked down at his dog, and he remembered his dog dying about 10 years ago. So he scratched his head, thought, what on earth was going on? And as they continued their walk, they came across this magnificent wall made of mother of pearl. And as they went a bit further on, they saw this magnificent gate and a road paved in gold. And as he looked up this road, he saw a man standing there. And he showed it to this man. He said, where are we? And the man said, this is heaven. And the man walking along with his dog, well, this time he was really thirsty, and he said, can I have some water? And the man standing behind them, Early, early days said, yes, yeah, sure, in fact, you can have some ice water. Come on in. The man said, can I bring my friend, pointing to his dog. And the man in heaven said, I'm sorry, no pets allowed in here. So the man thought about it, said to his friend, his pet, come on, we're going to continue our journey. And they continued the journey. And they went along with much farther along the road. And then they came to this dirt road. And there was a farm gate there. And this farm gate looked like it had never been shut. And there was this muddy path leading up to this shack. And there was this man sat there reading the book. And he shouted to this man, he said, excuse me, can you tell me where we are? And this man said, you're in heaven. Thirsty. I've got some questions I want to ask you, but I'm really thirsty. Can I have a can I have a drink? I said, yeah, sure. He said, there's a hand pump up there. I said, what about my friend, the dog? He said, yeah, sure. He said, there's, there's a bowl there. Just pour him a drink. He said, you're welcome. He said, but wait a minute. He said, this is really, really confusing. He said, I went down the road. He said, ah, oh. I said, he said, I know the place where you're talking about. He said, that place with that magnificent wall made of mother and pearl. He said, yeah, that's right. He said, but they said that was heaven, and you say this is heaven. Ah, he said, that's not heaven. He said, that's hell. I said, doesn't that make you annoyed that that person down the road is proclaiming that this place is heaven, and yet this is? And he said, no. He said, I can see how it might make you think that, but we're just happy that down the road they scream the folks and leave their friends. And do you know, we're here today to celebrate our friends, our pets. And do you know, when I was uh, uh, a youngster, the first brush with death I had, I don't laugh because it was serious to me. It's my goldfish. And when my goldfish died, it was only then that really I came across death and how death was explained to me. I used to have a, an air dam. Um, magnificent, magnificent. Oh, I just love that air dam. Whenever I got into trouble, I used to jump into the dog basket under the kitchen table and he wouldn't let my mum near me. <laughs> When I was 12, I was 12 on Christmas Eve, and my, my dog had to be put down. And you can imagine, can't you, a 12 year old at Christmas Eve, just excited about Christmas. But it was as if Christmas never happened for me, as I was in tears all Christmas. I'd lost all the best friends that I'd had Bruce, 
was his name. Back then for adult boots, still a lion to the boots. But for every one of us, I guess most of us here have lost a friend, and it's okay for us to come and remember them. And it's okay to come here and celebrate our friends that are with us here now. Now, we come and celebrate uh, St. Francis of Assisi. Now, I'm not honestly sure why St. Francis of Assisi who is a patron saint of animals. I guess it's because of his uh, marvelous nature. Now, St. Francis was actually uh, a, a really, came from a really well-off family. And his, his, his family were merchants. And one of the ways that merchants uh, actually uh, made money for their, for their sons was they used to send them off to serve in the army as a knight, which St. Francis did. Because basically what they used to do was they used to make a village. And they used to come back with gold and silver to finance their lifestyle. And St. Francis wasn't a very good soldier. He actually had got captured. And his father had to pay a ransom for him. But to cut a long story short, when St. Francis got back, St. Francis uh, decided that this wasn't for him, and he had an encounter with God. And the Holy Spirit came upon St. Francis, and St. Francis gave away all his money and served the poor for the rest of his life. And earlier I said that one of the things that frightened me about the Holy Spirit was that we might actually end up doing something that we don't really want to do. So imagine Kathy giving away all that wealth and, and then uh, living in, not poverty, but, but living with all the, all the fineries of life uh, not being there. And that was one of the reasons why I fought against the Holy Spirit. Because I knew once the Holy Spirit was going to be my life, he ended up doing things I didn't want to do. A ministry, for instance. I came in screaming to the ministry and I didn't want to do it. But I'm telling you here now today that Jesus Christ has a purpose for every single one of us here. Every single one of us. And I know if you're anything like me, some of you out there will be picking and screaming and saying, I don't want the Holy Spirit on my life. So I'm quite happy with the way things are now. Some of you in the past have come up for ministry and asked for an infilling of the Holy Spirit. And if nothing's happened, just wait. Because it will. Sometimes the Holy Spirit kind of sneaks up. And God's gentle. In our gospel reading, we, we heard about, um, about the yoke. Your yoke will be light. Well, Jesus was, a, as you know, was a carpenter. And I suspect one of the things that Jesus did was actually make yokes. The yokes used to go around the, the necks of, of cattle. And they connected it up to a plow that used to plow the fields. And the back of those days, they wouldn't just make any of them. They wouldn't go to, um, into a carpenter shop and say, oh, I love this one, and that one, and take it back and put it on a cattle. It would be a made to measure job. A carpenter would go and, and would measure the cattle that the yoke used to go on. He'd make uh, the yoke and then go back for a final fitting because uh, the, the yoke had to fit perfectly so the, cattle, so the yoke could do its job. And that's actually uh, the same with us. Jesus says your yoke will be right. So don't worry about inviting the Holy Spirit into your life and doing things that. Perhaps you're, you don't want to do. 
there's many things that we all have um, struggled with. You know, I struggle with things like crime. But one thing that the Holy Spirit really uh, came down upon me was to be obedient. And as I said, I came kicking and screaming to the ministry. And I was obedient to the calling. And I've told others here, and I'll tell you again, that when I came, I was hoping that they would say no, so I could continue with my very comfortable life. And as it happens, I have a very comfortable life now. And you know, praise you for our, our pets. Thank you, praise you, Father, uh, that they, um, just, they love us. Father, we just thank and praise you for your creation. Father, we just ask for your Holy Spirit on us. We want to, we want to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. 